Hi guys and welcome back. Today I will show you another super cool principle that you can find in the Royal Road to Card Magic. Okay, so the cards are shuffled and the spectator can cut the, the cards. I'm gonna ask them to cut the cards. So in three piles. So first I'll ask him to cut about two thirds and then about half of that one. Okay, so we have three piles. Now I ask him to point at one of the piles. Let's say he points at this one and then another pile. Let's say he points at this one. So now he gets this one and he can shuffle that as much as he wants like this. And he can now look at one of the cards. So let's say he picks, yeah, the king of spades. So he looks at that, he shows them to everyone else. He returns it to the pack. He can then shuffle this and place this on top to really lose that card, okay? And now he can cut the cards how much he wants, just like that. Yet, now I will try to find his card, okay? Casey, you did a really good job shuffling. Hmm. Hmm, yeah. Hmm. Okay. I think... Hmm. I think your card is at position 24. Now actually, position 18. No, no, 12. Or... Actually, I think it's right on top, face up, just like that. Okay, let's see how to do that. Okay guys, so before starting, we're closing in on a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we're really close now, and when we hit a thousand subscribers, we will have a giveaway, and I will show you one of my absolute favorite tricks. Okay, now let's get into this tutorial. So this trick is called the 26th card, and it's on page 73 if you want to follow along in your own copy of the Royal Road to Card Magic. We're going through that book on this channel right now. It's a super nice book, one of the best books for beginners. So hop on the train if you want to go with us. Now, this is another trick from the key card chapter in the book. But in this case, we won't be uh, using the key card in direct conjunction with our selection or their selection. Instead, we will be using another interesting principle called the remote key card. Uh, so in this case, we know the 26th card from the top. Uh, one way to do this is, of course, noting that before you do the trick, or if you've done a trick before, you can, can say like, okay, I have a sense that I've lost a card or something. Let's see if there's really 52 cards in the pack. And you, you know, deal the cards face up, counting them like this and noting the, the 26th card. Now, in this case, I know that we have the queen of the hearts in that position, okay? Before starting, you can shuffle the cards, but you don't want to, of course, disturb the position of the key card. So one way of doing that is the GW Hunter shuffle you can learn over here or over here. Another way you can do it is to shuffle by the third or so, but, you know, don't get into the middle of the cards. And once you've done that, instead of throwing this part on top, you throw it on the bottom instead, just like so. And you won't disturb the position of the key card. So you know the 26 card, now you're going to ask them to cut the cards into three piles. So they cut first, they cut off about two thirds and then about half of that, okay? So they have three piles approximately in the same size. Now our key card, the queen of hearts is in the middle of the middle pile. And you need them to take this pile, the right hand pile. And one way of doing that is simply giving that to them and asking them to shuffle it and pick, uh, pick the top card because they shuffled it and uh, you know, they should know what the top card is obviously. No one could know that. Another way of doing that is to actually force this pile on them. So in the book, they just say, you know, give this to them. But you can actually force it by saying point to pile, 
Now, if they point to this pile, that's perfect. They just get that pile. If they point to one of the other piles, you say, okay, point to another pile. And if they point to this one, then we have one left and you go, okay, you take this. And worst case scenario, but it works. If they, for example, point at this first and then this, you say, okay, well, okay, I take that one, point to another one, they point to this, okay, you take that. That will give a feel that it's still a free choice. In the end, they'll have this pile. Let's say they pick the king of, um, of hearts and they can shuffle this pile and they can place that back, place the king on top. Then you can have them shuffle this pile and place that back on top. You can actually also have them cut the cards how many times they want. And now you're going to say that, okay, you'll try to find their card. And by going through the faces, you can kind of, you know, do some kind of acting here, look at them and, and say that they should visualize their card or something like that to make it a little bit more interesting. But you run through the cards and when you find the key card, so in this case, the queen of hearts, you're going to count that as one. So you go one, two, three, and you're going to count 26 cards. So three, four, five. Okay, 25, 26. So we have their card, 26 from our key card. So once you find their card, you're going to cut that to the top. So it's once again, 26 from our key card. And if you run out of cards to count, then you continue on the face. But in any case, you cut there, you have this of course tilted so you can see it and you cut their card, their selection to the top, just like that. And once again, you can do some little acting here and say, hmm, I think it's on 20th, no, 18th and whatever. And then you produce it however you want. You can simply turn the top card over because that's a pretty cool effect in itself. You can also, and this is what they recommend in the book, push the top card to the side as you kind of elevate or tilt the deck up a little bit. So the top card is, you know, away from their eye line, basically. But what you're doing is you're pushing this card about half its length to the right. What you're going to do is you're going to toss these into your hand and the pressure from the air will make that card flip over like this okay so you need to play around a little bit with that you know to learn the right force when you throw the cards for example and then you have a quite a visual pr production of their card okay guys so that's it for this video it's a short little trick i know but it's a great one it's great to learn these different principle these different key cards principle are actually really cool and fooling you can really fool magicians as well uh, and if you like this remember leave a like and subscribe at a thousand subscribers we will have a giveaway and it's a super cool trick so make sure to subscribe for that thank you so much for watching bye bye